Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, in this video, we are going to be covering the very last concept of binomial theorem. Okay, and that is how to expand NCR without a calculator. Now, something about uh, this concept that you should know that officially it is part of the AS syllabus, okay? But you will find rarely any questions of this topic. In fact, uh, to be very honest, in the last five years at least, I haven't come across a question like this, but you know, uh, if there's something that's in the syllabus, you should prepare for it. Uh, you never know when you might uh, have a surprise, okay? So yeah, <clears throat> that's exactly what we're gonna learn in this video, how to expand NCR without a calculator. Okay, so a couple of um, before, before we get into it, there are a couple of things that I want you guys to, uh, a couple of general rules, okay? Or facts, you can say. So for this, I'd like you guys to use your calculator, okay? Uh, quickly evaluate 5C0. Now, if you work out 5C0, you'll notice that the answer is one, okay? You can do that with the help of a calculator. And then work out 10C0. If you do that, you'll notice that the answer is one also, okay? Then if you work out 15C0, you will notice that the answer is one again, okay? So that means it doesn't matter what you have before C as long as it's C0, okay? So you could have N C0, the answer is always going to be equal to what? The answer is always going to be equal to one, okay? So that's fact number one. Now, if you work out 5C1, again, using your calculator, you'll notice that the answer is five. If you work out 10C1, you'll notice that the answer is 10 again. If you work out 15C1, you'll notice that the answer is 15. So following the same pattern, what do you think would be NC1? So NC1 is equal to N. So whatever value you have before C, as long as you have one right after C, it's gonna be equal to the value that you had before C, okay? Now, if you work out 5C5 using a calculator, you'll notice that the answer is one. If you work out 10C10 using a calculator, you'll notice that the answer is one again. If you work out 15C15 using a calculator, you'll notice that the answer is one also. That means if you work out NCN, what is that gonna be equal to? That's gonna be equal to one, okay? So as long as the value before C and the value after C are the same, the answer will be equal to one, okay? So that is basically rule number. I mean, th these are basically the three facts that you should know, okay? But obviously you're not always gonna be evaluating NC1 or NC1 or NCN. There are gonna be cases where you'll have to do NC2, NC3, so on and so forth, okay? So in order to learn how that works, I'm gonna basically solve a few examples over here, okay? And uh, that will hopefully help you understand the concept. Okay, now let's say you have seven C2. Now the way this works is, so you have seven, you start with seven, then you multiply it with a term that's less than seven, one less than seven, so that's six, and you divide the denominator by two factorial. Yes, so that's a new concept, factorial. So let's quickly learn that. Let's quickly learn what factorial is. So let's say that you have five factorial. This is not five exclamation mark, okay? It's not like five, okay? This is five factorial, which means that you start by five, you go one place back, so that's four, and then another, that's three, that's two, that's one, and you keep on doing till you get to one, okay? So what is this equal to? 20, 60, 120. So five factorial is 120. Now let's say you had to work out six factorial. So you do the exact same thing. Six into five, into four, into three, into two, into one. Okay, what's that equal to? That's equal to 720. Okay, I don't think that my mental maths is really that good that I'm able to work this out. It's just that I've solved so many questions. So now it's natural that I remember the values, okay? So that means uh, if I uh, wanna find out n factorial, so we start by n, we go one place back, so that's n minus one, n minus two. Now, since we don't know what the value of n is, so obviously we don't know where to stop. So we will do into, and then we'll write three dots, into three, into two, one, into two, into one, showing that we will continue till we get to one, okay? Now, uh, if you have two factorial, okay, coming back over here, if you have two factorial, that means this is gonna be uh, into two times one, all right, okay. Then you can work this out, okay, whatever this is equal to. That's not what we're really interested in right now, that what exactly is the answer, okay? What we're really interested in is how to expand and then eventually work this out, okay? So let's say that you had 10C3, okay? So I want you to mentally sort of give this a shot and then compare your answer with what I'm about to do. So 10C3, you'll start from 10, and then you'll have nine, and then eight. So notice how the number of terms in the denominator is always equal to the value that you have after C. So if you have 10C3, you'll have three terms in the numerator, starting from 10, and then you'll keep on going one place. So you'll keep on subtracting the value by one. And in the denominator, you'll have three factorial, which means three into two into one. Now let's say you had to work out 15C4. Well, let's see, what is that? How does that look like? So 15C4 is gonna be 15 into 14. 
into 13 into 12 and this is where you stop because you have four terms in the numerator divided by four factorial which is as good as four into three into two into one and then of course you can simplify like for example you can cross out the four and three with the 12 and then you can simplify two and 14 so you can use all sorts of simplification method to find out the final answer okay so let's do one more example before we start using n and we'll see how that works so let's say you have 18 c let's say five okay so how do we start we start with 18 and then 18 minus one, that's 17, and then 16, and then 15. So now we have four terms in the numerator. So we write down one more to make it five and divide by five factorial, five into four, into three, into two, into one. Okay, now, now that you've learned how to do it with numbers, hopefully, let's see what it looks like when we do it with n. So starting from nc zero. So let's see what this act look like. So nc zero, as we know very well, is equal to one, okay? And nc one is equal to n. All right, we just saw that nc1 is equals to n. So what is nc2 going to look like? So we'll start by n, okay, and then we will multiply it by one va value that's one less than n to make to have two terms in the numerator. And then we will divide by two factorial, which is although you could just write two and get away with it. But just to emphasize on factorial, I'll write two into one. And then the next term that you will have, obviously, is nc3, which means that you will start from n, you'll have n minus one in the numerator and then n minus two to have a total of three terms. And in the denominator, you'll have three times two times one, okay? So let's see what nc4 is. Um, again, I'd like you to sort of work this out in your head and then match your answer. So n into n minus one into n minus two, so that's a total of three terms into n minus three. So now that's a total of four terms, one, two, three, four, divide by four factorial, which means four into three into two into one. And there you go. That's it, that's what NC4 looks like. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that there aren't a lot of questions to uh, that have appeared in past papers or, or revolving around this concept, but here's a question that's from the book, okay? And uh, I've, I've also taken out another question from Ad Maths, okay? Just so that we can learn the concept and if a question like this comes, you guys are well prepared for it. Okay, <clears throat> so this says when one minus x upon three to the power n is expanded the power in ascending powers of x the coefficient of x squared is 4 given that n is positive now you'll probably understand why this means uh positive integer sorry uh find the value of n okay so what we're really interested in is the coefficient of x square okay so if it's just the coefficient of x square that we're interested in so we're just going to pick the value of r that gives us the coefficient of x square and from prior knowledge we should know that it's 2 that's going to give us the coefficient of x squared because as we can see x is in the second term okay so nc2 all right one to the power n minus two into minus x to the power of three. Oh, sorry to the power of two not three okay now nc2 we know very well now is n into n minus one upon two one to the power n minus two we can just completely ignore it. not going to make a difference into x square over nine okay now remember what we're really interested in is the coefficient, okay? So that means I can sort of ignore x square, okay? Let me write it nicely before we do that. So n into n minus one upon 18 x square, okay? So if we just take the coefficient into consideration, so that's equal to this, and this, according to the question, not according to me, n, n minus one upon 18, the coefficient of x square, according to the question, as I mentioned, is four, okay? So now what do we have? We have n square minus n is equal to 18 fours or 36, 72, yeah, 72. So we move 72 over to the other side. So now we have n square minus n minus 72 is equal to zero. We can probably see where this is going. This is going towards a quadratic equation. So we'll do middle term breaking and nine and eight are two terms that we're looking for, which we multiply and then get minus 72, minus nine and eight. And when we add, we get minus one. Uh, you guys are a AS level students, uh, hopefully the ones who are watching this video. So I expect you guys to know this very well. In case you don't, there's always a video you can watch. Anyway, so uh, we factor out n from n squared minus 9n. So we have n minus 9. And then we factor out 8 from 8n minus 72. And we have n minus 9 again, which means that we've done it correctly. So now we have n plus 8 into n minus 9 equals to 0. And we have the two values of n. One is minus 8. And the other is... 9. So what's the value that we will settle for? We will settle for 9. Why? Because the question told us at the very beginning that the value of n that you're looking for is a positive integer. And thankfully, it's an integer. It's positive. That means it's the correct answer. 
So hopefully you've understood this concept through this example. And in case you haven't, like I said, there's another example prepared for you guys. This one's quite lengthy actually. And uh, so anyway, let's get to it. So it says, and as I mentioned, this is from AdMats. Okay, so if you haven't done AdMats, it's okay. Nothing to worry about. If you've done AdMats and you probably know what I'm talking about, even then if you don't, just watch the video, you'll have an idea. Okay, so it says, given that n is a positive integer, find the first three terms, okay, in the expansion of so-and-so. So we start from n c zero, one raised to the power n and half x to the power zero. So that's kind of irrelevant because it's gonna be one anyway. And then we have n c one, one raised to the power n minus one, half x to the power one. And then we have n c two, one to the power n minus two and half x to the power two. Okay, so we write this nicely. The first term is going to be one. Okay, that's a no brainer. N c one is n half to the power n minus one. We can just completely ignore. And this is being multiplied by half x. Okay, so we write this nicely and this becomes n upon two x. Okay, now as far as this is concerned, n c two is going to be n into n minus one upon two. One to the power n minus two, we can just conveniently ignore. Okay, and that gets multiplied by one upon four x squared. So let's write this nicely. This becomes n into n minus one upon eight x squared. Okay, so we write the final answer of part a, which is one plus n upon two x plus n into n minus one upon eight x squared. And if you're wondering why I haven't expanded n and n minus one, there's particular, there's really no reason behind as to why I haven't done that, okay. Uh, we will have to eventually, although in the next part. So it says, given that the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of, okay, so this is where things can get slightly complicated. Okay, so you have one plus one upon two x to the power n, and this is equal to what? The coefficient of x squared is actually equal to 25 upon four. Now, although we haven't done questions like these, uh, ideally I would have wanted to first do a couple of questions where we find the coefficient of x squared x cubed by multiplying a couple of terms together. But um, anyway, it's okay, we can still do this question. So basically we already know the expansion of one plus half x, right? The question was kind enough to make us figure that out already. So that's what I'm gonna replace this with. Now, when you do that, okay, remember, that what you're really looking for is the terms that you can multiply and get the coefficient of x squared, okay? So that way you don't have to multiply everything, you can just multiply the terms that give you x squared, okay? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So as far as this one is concerned, I'm not gonna multiply this one by every single term over here. I'm just gonna straight away multiply it by n into n minus one upon eight x squared so that I get exactly what I want and that is the coefficient of x squared. And then as far as this minus x is concerned, there's no point multiplying it by one. There is only point in multiplying it by n upon two x that we get minus n upon two x squared. And there is no point in multiplying it by n into n minus one x squared upon eight because that's gonna make it x cubed, okay? So now what we're really looking for is just the coefficient, okay? So that means I'm just gonna conveniently ignore x squared, okay? Because like I said, we're only interested in the coefficient, okay? So now if you want, we can expand and write this as n squared minus n upon eight minus n upon two. And since this is the coefficient, according to the question, this is equal to what? This is equal to 25 upon four. Now you can probably see where this is going in case you can't, it's okay, nothing to worry about. That's what I'm here for. This is basically a quadratic equation, which we're gonna solve and find the value of n. Okay, uh, does it say anywhere? Yeah, so it says n is a positive integer, so make sure that whatever value you end up with, you only give the positive value. So the LCM is gonna be eight, which means we'll have n squared minus n as it is. This needs to be multiplied by four, so that means this also gets multiplied by four, so we have minus four n is equals to 25 upon four. So we simplify first before cross multiplying. So four ones are four, four twos are eight, and now we have n squared minus five n, and if you multiply 25 and two, you get 50. So now you can probably see where this is going, n squared minus five n minus 50 equals to zero. Okay, so we do middle term breaking. So minus 10 and positive five are the two numbers that you're looking for. Okay, and then we factor out n, so we get n minus 10, and then we factor out five, so that we get n minus 10 again, equals to zero. So now we have n plus five or n minus 10, which is equal to zero, which means the two values, the two potential values are minus five and 10. Now, the value of n that we're gonna stick with is obviously 10, because this is the only positive integer that we have. Okay, now that brings me to the end of this video, and hopefully you've understood this concept. Let me know down in the comment section how, 
how well you've understood this concept. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.